How's it going everyone and welcome back to Rangers Rundown. Setup's going to look a little bit different now. Got myself a fancy whiteboard. This is just going to allow me to do videos uh, in a more timely manner now that work has started back up and I'm in the thick of that. This will allow me to take notes on the whiteboard while the game is going and then once the game is over I can hop on here. I can do a quick 10-15 minute at most video upload it straight to YouTube, and then I can go to bed so I can not be a zombie at work the next day. So setup's going to look a little different. Same channel, though. I wanted to do a 2021 season preview just so we can get an idea of how the Rangers are looking for this season and what we can expect. Uh, I know this year is crazy, but let's see what happens. So obviously some new divisions, they had to rearrange it so that travel could not be as crazy for all the COVID restrictions. Canada is their own division. And then there are three US divisions that are a little bit more scrambled. Instead of the Metro, we now have the Eastern division and those are the teams at the bottom of the whiteboard. Instead of Carolina, we have Boston. And instead of Columbus, we have Buffalo. So the Metro, the new Metro, the Eastern Division is still just as crazy, just as Thunderdome-y as it has been. I think with the addition of Boston, we're going to see a lot of old rivalries kind of respawn in this new year. Um, and then Buffalo, of course, in the past, Buffalo has been a pretty bad team, but you know, they could have a decent year and give everyone a run for their money. So a lot of analysts and a lot of people online are saying that the Rangers, even though they're doing well and they're towards the end of this rebuild to where they can start being a cup contender, maybe next year, even though all of the pieces are starting to fall into place for the Rangers, they still probably end up fifth at best in this division. I mean, you have to think Boston's going to be make the playoffs. Um, Washington's probably going to make the playoffs. Pittsburgh's probably going to make the playoffs. Philly's probably going to make the playoffs. And that leaves, you know, the the Rangers and the Islanders battling for that, you know, first loser spot in this division. So, it, it, and, you know, this year's crazy. So who knows what's going to happen. But anyway, 56 games this season instead of the 82. It's far more crunched. It looks more like a baseball schedule where you get a lot more back-to-backs. You see the same team four or five times within two weeks, and we'll see how that works. I mean, the, you know, there's a lot less travel this year, which is great, but you're also playing a lot more games in a more condensed amount of time. So it's it's going to take a toll on some of the players that maybe didn't, um, you know, uh, what's the word? Not work out. Condition as much as they probably should have in this offseason. Uh, opening night is Thursday night against the Islanders, so that'll be a nice opening matchup game. It is home, so the Rangers get their first game of the year as their home opener. Not that there's going to be a crowd or anything, so, you know, I guess it's nice to be home, but it's nicer to have the crowd. Um, I'm not quite sure if the Rangers are the youngest team in the league. They're definitely bottom, they're youngest of, like, the third second or first youngest they're they're down there somewhere but inexperience and youth might be a factor this year uh one way or the other like the young guys on this team could prove really good and have a great start to the season and jump out and maybe the rangers win a couple of their first 10 15 games of the season who knows but the youth is definitely going to be a factor for the rangers this year uh, obviously Jesper Faust is gone. This hurt me a lot. He was one of my favorite players. He's in Carolina now, and he was one of the unsung heroes of this team. He is going to be quite a void that needs to be filled. He was one of the most defensively responsible forwards on the team, and he did a lot of penalty kill minutes. So who fills that gap? I have no idea. The Rangers are going to have to figure that out. The penalty kill this year for the Rangers is going to be very telling of how the rest of this year is going to go. Defensively overall, but the penalty kill especially. And of course, Lundqvist got bought out, went signed with the Capitals, and then just underwent open heart surgery. Um, All signs says it went well, so we wish him you know, a speedy recovery, and who knows if he'll actually play another NHL game or not, but, you know, it's it sucks to hear that happen, but I'm happy to hear the surgery went well, and now he can kind of recoup from that. Uh, I think the biggest point for this season is just having realistic expectations for this team. It, 
it's gonna be just a crazy year. Players are gonna get sick. Like, it's just, it's gonna be nuts. And players are gonna get sick for the Rangers. Players are gonna get sick for other good teams in the division. So if we come up on the schedule and we have back-to-back -back against the Bruins in the day before, you know, Marchand and Bergeron, you know, get COVID and they can't play those two games, you know, that, you know, it sucks for them, but things like that are going to happen against the Rangers and for the Rangers' interests. Um, there is no preseason this year. We're hopping right into meaningful hockey. So the first two weeks of this season are going to be preseason, or at least it's going to look like preseason. It's going to be a lot of sloppy hockey from a lot of these teams for the first probably 10 games. So opening night, I'm not expecting magic from the Rangers. I'm not expecting magic from any team, but it's important for us as fans to have realistic expectations for this team. It's a young team and they're playing during a really weird schedule. So we're not expecting them to win the Stanley Cup this year anyway. So I think the focus this year should be on development and not let's charge into the playoffs, especially battling against these teams. It's just realistic expectations. Um, and then some positives. I felt like throwing some positives. You know, everybody's going to be very negative about this year. We are playing hockey, which is great for us hockey fans. But a couple other positives, at least for me, all of the Rangers games this year are going to start at 7 o'clock, which is great. They're used to, you know, when they would go out to California and play the, the West Coast teams, the games wouldn't start until 10, 10.30. And I'm already in bed. So at least this year, if I'm not busy, I can catch the entirety of every single Rangers game this year, which is good stuff. Uh, there's less travel. I think I said that earlier. There's less travel. So there's, you know, we're in the same time zone the entire year. So there's not going to be having to do jet lag and all that stuff. It's all... They're, all these teams are close enough to each other where travel's not going to be too bad. Uh, not going to inflict as much emotional and physical turmoil as it would usually. And like I said before, old rivalries are going to spark up. You know, the Bruins are never going to see Montreal this year. So they don't have that rivalry to hold on to. Maybe the rivalry with the Rangers re-sparks. You never know. And we might see some new rivalries. You never know. Maybe the Rangers and the Sabres. All of a sudden, they're playing really, really fun games this year. And that rivalry kind of sparks up who knows could be fun i wanted to highlight a couple uh players and staff uh just real quick obviously alexi lafreniere we're all excited to see him play reports coming out of camp say he's doing really well and they're saying he looks like uh kind of what kako looked like when he was really firing on all cylinders during camp and preseason last year so that's going to be very exciting kako obviously a rough first year in the league and everybody's just hoping and praying that he has a bounce back sophomore season. He really has to at this point. In order for this Rangers lineup to work, Kako is now a key piece in this. And we saw sparks of what he's capable of back in August during the, uh, the weird playoff format that we had last year. The Rangers only played three games, but in those three games, he was one of the most impressive Rangers. And if he can tap into what he was doing in August... I think that really bodes well for the Rangers this year. Uh, Keandre Miller, he, he made the team. He made the team out of camp. He went into camp and he showed the Rangers why he deserves to be in this lineup. And I'm very excited because he's one of the young defensemen that's really going to help bolster the defense of this team, which is their biggest flaw right now is defense. The Rangers have no problem scoring. I mean, look at the top nine. The Rangers aren't going to have a problem scoring goals. It's keeping goals out of our own net. And Keandre Miller is a key piece in that, so I'm happy to see he'll be playing some games. Jack Johnson. I remember when the Penguins signed Jack Johnson to that, like, I think they signed him for like four, five, six years. And I remember everybody being like, why the hell did the Penguins just sign Jack Johnson for so long? And then the Rangers sign him for one year, and I think to myself, what are the Rangers doing? How is he in any way going to help the Rangers this year? I mean, he's a veteran presence, I guess, but you had that in Mark Stahl. 
So I, I, best case scenario, Jack Johnson doesn't hurt the Rangers because I really don't see any way that he helps them. So we'll see. Mika Zibanejad uh, said uh, he was interviewed uh, by some guys after a practice earlier this week. He confirmed that he did have COVID, and that's why he wasn't with the team. He was able to catch uh, the last couple practices with the team, though. But he, even he's unsure if he's going to play Thursday night. And if he doesn't play Thursday night, who slots into that top line? I really don't know. There's a million different ways they can rearrange, but who's going to take Zibanejad's spot? If they move Strom up, they're probably going to have to move Panarin up because Panarin and Strom have a lot of chemistry. So does that mean everybody moves up a line and then they bring somebody in from the taxi squad to fill in that bottom center spot? I, I don't know. So I hope he plays Thursday night, but if he does, that, that remains to be seen. Jacques Martin, he's the guy that's coming in and taking Lindy Ruff's place. Lindy Ruff is obviously now the head coach of the New Jersey Devils, and we wish him all the best. We'll see him eight times this season, so we'll see what happens. But Jacques Martin, uh, he came over from Pittsburgh. He's a very good defensive coach, and he's taken over Lindy Ruff's spot. Again, defense is a big problem for this team, so I'm hoping Jacques Martin can come in and you know fix this defense at least a little bit. He worked with Jack Johnson in Pittsburgh, so maybe Jacques Martin knows how to best utilize him. Uh, you know, we're, we're hoping. And then last, uh, Coach Quinn. This is going to be his third year with the Rangers. And this is kind of a get-out-of-jail-free card year for him because if the Rangers end up, you know, 6th, 7th, 8th in this division, I think he gets a free pass. It's a really weird year, condensed schedule, players are going to get sick, coaching staff might get sick, we might see Coach Quinn have to quarantine for two weeks, and we won't see him behind the bench, who knows. But I think he gets a free pass this year, and I'm really hoping that he realizes how tough this division is, and realizes that he needs to prioritize developing these young players over pushing for a playoff spot. And I think if he can do that, then we can come away from this year looking forward to next year. I'm excited hockey's back. I'm excited to see the Rangers play, but I'm more excited at seeing how much better this team is going to be at the end of these 56 games. It looks like they're not making the playoffs. Let's be honest. I'm not expecting the Rangers to make the playoffs. I am, however, expecting that they're a better team at the end of the season. So that way, hopefully when the world is back to normal next year, we can start pushing for a playoff spot and not damage the development of any of these young players. That's my hope. Hopefully Coach Quinn does that and we can just not be angry with him at the end of the year. And let's just uh, lastly go through this projected lineup of what we're going to see Thursday evening. If Zabanajad plays, that's great. It'll be the KZB line, Kreider, Zabanajad, Buchnevich. Uh, reports also said Buchnevich was doing really well in camp, so that's going to be a really nice scoring line. And then our second line, we got Panarin, Strom, and Kako. I'm really happy to see Kako on that second line. I'm happy to see Coach Quinn pushing him, giving him a top six role, because I think that's what he needs to flourish and get a better sophomore year. Third line, uh, Lafreniere, uh, Lafreniere is with Hedl and Gauthier. I'm excited for that line because uh, reports also said Hedl's doing really well in camp and he's working on his game and he's you know put on some weight and he's trying to score more goals, which is great. And now he has this weapon on his left side, Lafreniere. I'm, I'm hoping he has a good year. This is a rough year to start in the NHL, but I hope he does well with it. That's going to be a really fun line to watch. And then, of course, our bottom line, we got Lemieux with Howden and Giuseppe. You know, it's, it's your fourth line, and Quinn doesn't really like playing his fourth line that much. That line's going to see seven, eight minutes a night. Um, you know, he'll throw Lemieux out there if we need somebody to fight. Um, 
Howden, I, I think the fan base has been souring on Howden uh, every year that he's still a Ranger. Coach Quinn loves him. I don't get it. He's not really showing the ceiling that we thought he was going to have. So hopefully he stays on that fourth line because if he starts getting playing time over Heedle, I, that's just that's really going to tick me off. And it's going to tick the rest of the fan base off too. Defense pairs, Keandre Miller is getting put with Truba, which is nice. I like that. He's a young kid. It's his first year in the NHL and he's getting top pair minutes. He's probably going to struggle, but that's good because he can probably handle it. And he's a great defensive prospect. And it's better that we see Miller with Truba instead of D'Angelo on the top pair playing on his offhand with Truba, this makes much more sense. Uh, our second pair, obviously Lindgren and Fox, they play so well together. They complement each other so well. Fox is obviously a great two-way defenseman. He likes to get up into the play. And when he does that, he can count on Lindgren to hold back and stay uh, as a defenseman up high in the zone just in case something happens. So I love that pair. And then of course our bottom pair is most likely gonna be Johnson and D'Angelo. That's fine. Um, you know, that pair is going to be out against the other team's third and fourth line. So defensively, they won't have to play as hard. We know D'Angelo's not a great defensive defenseman. He likes to be up in the play. Great offensive defenseman, but he lacks a lot on the defensive front. And then Johnson just, you know, he can skate forward and that's about it. So we'll see how they do together. I, I don't know. Whenever that pair is on the ice, I'm going to be holding my breath. Just don't make too many mistakes, please. And then, of course, uh, Shesterkin and Georgiev. It's it's a great pair of goalies. Like, you, you look around this division, and there's a lot of good goalie tandems. And I think the Rangers are have one of the better goalie tandems of this division. It's just whether or not the rest of the team can kind of flesh out. Um, really looking forward to see what Shester can, can do when we give him more than a 10 game sample. Like, can he live up to the hype? And it's great that he has a backup that doesn't mind playing 30, 30, or not 30, um, like 25 games this year. I feel like they're going to split almost pretty evenly. Shester can will probably get more games, obviously, but I can see, you know, Shester can playing 32, 33 games and then Georgiev getting the other, the other handful. It's, it's really reassuring to have these two goalies. I wouldn't call him a 1A, 1B just yet. Um, you know, Shesterkin proved himself last year, but can he do it over a full schedule? So I'll say we have like a 1B, 1B goalie situation here. And then 20, 30 games into the season, if Shesterkin's firing on all cylinders, this is, it's just, it's a great pair. And I look forward to the future with these two. It's, it's going to be great. But that's all I have for this season preview. Um, I'm going to start doing games. I'll start throwing stuff up after each game. So look for another video Thursday night. And I'm really looking forward to the season. I hope you are too. Uh, if you enjoy these videos, uh, you know, make sure to subscribe, throw a like on there. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.